batch again because we are going to do some more gathering. This time we are going to do a fermenting method that will extract the pigment into the water so we can make either a paste or a powder out of it for later use. So, so far I've gathered indigo and dried it for later use, just plain dried leaves in my dehydrator. And we've also used fresh indigo with salt to get that bright blue color that you saw in the earlier Patreon video. And this time we're gonna do, hopefully, a dark color. So like last time, I am going to cut the indigo and I've got the Persicaria tinctoria in my garden. I'm gonna cut it about two to three nodes up to leave some space for more leaves to go for grow for a future harvest. But this time I don't have to strip the leaves off. I'm just gonna take them and put them in this bucket and then we're gonna cover them with water. So let's get started. got the indigo in some water. Um, if you live in an area that's a little more chilly, you can start it off in some warm water. This is going to get some of the afternoon sunlight and I'm going to wrap a, a black plastic bag around it to try and bring in the heat because you want to keep it 90, 100, even more degrees. You want to keep the water hot. That's going to really kick, kick start the fermenting process which breaks down the leaves, activates the enzymes, and starts settling out or bringing out that pigment that is going to end up sinking to the bottom of your water. But you want to keep it all underwater, so this is what I had laying around. I'm going to use a big piece of marble <laughs> or granite, let's see, and a couple of rocks to try and keep everything underwater. And if some things float up, you can tuck them back under. But basically, you're going to keep them underwater for a few days. At first, as it starts, as leaves start to break down, it's going to smell really good. That indigo smell. If you if you've smelled indigo before, you know what I mean. It's kind of a a fresh green scent. Most people like it. Some people don't like it at all. Um, I think it smells good. So after a few days, it's going to start getting really stinky and you're going to start to see the top of the water look like an iridescent green, almost like antifreeze. It's got a sheen to it, and that's when you know it's ready. We're going to check it every day to see how things change and keep up to date. For now, I've wrapped it in black plastic since it's clear. I wanted to keep the light out as much as I can, keep the heat in, and I just put this on top to help keep the bag closed. And we'll check on it tomorrow. Okay, it's day two. And you can see the color is starting to change just a little bit, kind of getting greenish, bluish greenish. It's supposed to be warm for the next couple of days and then it's going to cool off a bit. So hopefully it will get the chance to warm up enough and do what it needs to do before we get the cool spell. It is day two and I want to take a look. At the indigo, I had to change the setup here a little bit because the water was buckling the sides out so the top wasn't staying on. So I just put this on top to keep, keep it warm. Ooh, look at that. You see that blue color? It is looking really good. It might only be another day or two. It doesn't have that... Um, antifreeze sheen to it yet, but the color is great. All right, here's day three. You can see it is starting to get a film on top. It still smells pretty fresh. It's not stinky yet, but I think we are getting very close. Maybe one more day. Okay, look at this, you guys. It is day four. It's kind of stinky, <laughs> but look, 
you can see where the oxygen is mixing with the pigment on the top of the water and changing changing the color a bit. Look at that color. I think it's ready. So four days. So what I'm going to do is take all the plant material out. You can see it in there. There's some of it that's still pretty green, so what I might do is put the green stuff through a second fermentation, see if I can get a little more color out, but I don't want this to go bad because it can sit for too long. So I'm going to take all the, all the plants out, and then we're going to mix in some uh, garden lime to bring the pH way up to about 10, and we're going to mix in some oxygen. And I've got a blender that I'm going to try and use for that, and we'll see how it goes. So what's happening right now is, as far as I understand it, the fermentation process has broken down the plant material uh, enough that it is releasing the pigment into the water. Uh, because all the plant is underwater, it's a, an anaerobic reaction. So we want to get that pigment out of the water now, which means we need to increase the pH and add in the oxygen to get it to bind to the oxygen and basically sink to the bottom. And then we will gather the pigment from there. stuff that I took out it's really slimy and gross <laughs> recommendation if you don't want your hands to smell you should use gloves I've washed them about five times now <laughs> and you can tell the flies are already going for it it's pretty stinky I don't think I'm gonna do a second fermentation they're looking pretty yellowy brown to me in color and I don't think I'm gonna get a whole lot more out of them um, so I'll probably just toss them in the compost pile I am going to use this and grab some water out and add the lime to this. So I make sure that it is nice and um, dissolved before I pour it back in. I have read um, a teaspoon of lime per gallon. Um, I've read a tablespoon. Really what I'm gonna do is, so this is what I'm adding, it's a hydrated lime. It's just garden lime. It's used to raise the pH of the soil, and we're going to use it to raise this. So what I'm going to do is probably add about a half cup into this, mix it all in really well, and then test the pH. So you will need some pH strips for this so you can see if you're getting somewhere around a 10 pH. All right, I have put in probably about a quarter cup. You want to start small. You don't want to add too much and then have to go backwards from the pH. The, the thing is, if you don't know what the pH of your water is, say your pH, the pH of your water is already an 8, you might not need to add as much. Mine is around 6, 6.5, so I need to add a little more. So I can't give you a definite, you need only this amount, because it depends on what you're starting with. So start small, and then add more to it if you need to. I know I've got a lot of gallons of water, and I know my pH is already low. All right. So I'm using Hydreon pH paper it tests from 1 to 14 and that way I can use it for acidic and alkaline situations. So let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. 
So that right there, that's barely got it up to a seven. So I definitely need to add some more. So I'll keep going. Okay. I added about another half cup and that definitely got it way up there. So that's probably closer to 11 or 12. So I think we're good to go. The pH is high. The next thing to do is aerate it. You can use whatever you've got. You can take two cups and just keep pouring the water back and forth. You could use a big spoon with holes in it. You can see as I add the air, the bubbles are turning blue. Right? The oxygen is coming into contact with the, uh, with the pigment and bonding and making it um, non-soluble. So it's going to float on the water, it's going to sink to the bottom. Well, the bubbles are going to float on the water. The main pigment is going to sink to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is actually use something that I have, that I used to use for soap making, and see if we can add the oxygen in pretty quickly. Okay, here it is. I have no idea if this is going to work or splash everything everywhere. We will see. You can see the foam on the top's getting a really nice blue color. I'm gonna go at it for another 10 minutes or so and really get the oxygen in there. If you're doing it by hand, you might wanna work it for 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and then what you do is you let it sit. You might need to let it sit for a couple hours or a full day. The pigment should all drop to the bottom and your fluid should look yellowy brown, possibly even close to clear. All right, here's what it looks like now. I have been stirring it up and it has turned nice dark blue. There was a good foam on the top for a while and then I think I mixed that in too. I may have overmixed it. Um, that's quite a powerful drill tool. <laughs> so I'm going to let it sit for a few hours and see how things go. You can already kind of see a pigment starting to just settle out. Really cool. And hopefully tomorrow I can strain off some of this water and start digging up the sludge on the bottom that will become our indigo pigment. All right, I'm up bright and early to check on the indigo. Oreo is here to help, <laughs> as is a little butterfly. <laughs> All right, it is kind of brown, murky looking. Um, still a little stinky, but not too bad. But if you look to the side, you can see it's kind of clear, and then right at the bottom you've got this layer of blue. So what I'm gonna do now is slowly strain off the top of the water, trying not to disturb the sediment at the bottom. I've got, um, I've got some little scientific beakers that we used when I was homeschooling the kids. Um, I like that it's glass and clear because then I can see if I'm getting a lot of sediment in there and I'm just gonna pour it all into some buckets. And that way, um, what looks completely clear, I can toss. If I get some sediment in there, then I can let that settle again and try and restrain off anything more. The thing to remember is that this is still at a very high pH. It's a very alkaline solution, so you don't wanna get your hands in there. So I'm gonna be wearing gloves, and if I get any on my skin, I'll wash it off. It's not gonna burn immediately, but it's certainly not good for your skin. Now, because this is such a high pH, you need to neutralize it before you put it into the groundwater or um, down the sink. So I'm going to probably use, I have citric acid and I have vinegar. Um, I'll use one of those and check the pH until it's closer to neutral before I dispose of it. 
Okay, so I have this big bucket full of the high pH water. Um, it was probably close to a 10 or 11. Um, when I first put it in here, I added maybe a half cup of white vinegar. I just got a cheap white vinegar from the grocery store and tested it again, and it's now closer to seven. So I gave it a good stir, made sure it was all mixed in well, and now it's neutral, so I can just toss it into the yard or down the drain. I'm getting closer to the bottom, and the big container I was using started stirring up some of the sediment. So um, I'm going to let it sit for a bit and let everything fall back down to the ground or down to the bottom, and then I will start using this one because it's a little bit smaller. And what I'll also start doing is if I start getting sediment in this, and I, you can't, it gets to a point where you can't really help it, I'm going to put it in a taller bucket and um, let that sediment fall to the ground and or fall to the bottom and continue to take the fluid off the top um, and I'll show you as we go. I have taken off as much as I possibly can with it sitting flat. I decided to prop it up a little bit and let the rest of the fluid settle out at an angle and then I can draw off a little bit more water and then it'll be time to take that sludge out of the bottom. But look at that, you can see that beautiful indigo pigment down there. All right, I've gotten off as much as I can. So now I'm going to strain what's left the sludge in the bottom. This is just an old piece of silk that I've got. So I'm going to double it up and use this as my straining cloth. It's got a nice tight weave, so it'll let the fluid through, but not the pigment. I'm going to kind of shake it up to get everything off the bottom. I don't want it to go up over the side, so I'm just going to let it sit for a bit while that strains out, and then I'll pour some more in. Look at that color. All right, I've poured everything from the big bin into my silk strainer. Sometimes when it's sitting in the big strainer, it just doesn't want to drain as well, so I'm letting gravity help. I've got it pinned up here on my turkey roaster <laughs> that I use for eco printing. And I'm just gonna let it drain. I'm gonna let it hang there for a while, and then I think I'm going to well, you can stop there and take the paste and put that in a jar and that will keep for a long time and use the paste to make your indigo vat or you can dry it into a powder, which is what most people are used to getting their indigo as, um, a dried indigo pigment and then you use that for your vat. I would like to go the final step and dry it out completely so that I can put the powder away for later use and it will keep longer than the paste. So once this is drained as much as it can be, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so it has dripped about as much as it is going to drip. So I am going to take what's in my container of pigment, my bag, and put it on this. This is something that I made a long time ago for drying herbs. It's just four pieces of wood that are um, hammered together and have some window screen in it. And you can use anything that you've got that will allow some air through. Anything that will allow the air to penetrate the fabric and then we'll put this out in the sun and let it completely dry out.
Right now you can see it's just basically a paste. At this point, it, it still has a smell. It kind of smells like um, a fish market. <laughs> Not like rotten fish, you might think, too much information, but it's just kind of like a fresh fish market. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So there we go. Now I'm just going to let it, let it really dry out and then I will scrape it off the silk and put it away for storage. Just a quick peek. After a few hours out in the sunshine, it already looks like this. It's starting to get a little cracked around the edges. I imagine by tonight I'll probably be able to um, crumble it up and put it away. After being out in the sun, you can see how it has crisped up and dried in chunks. It's like hot clay on the ground in a really dry area. <laughs> so it'll be really easy to just kind of scrape this off the silk and put it in a container. Um, if you have a blender that you use for just for craft purposes, you could always blend it up um, to ground it into a fine powder. You could use a, a coffee grinder that you use just for craft purposes. Um, you could use a mortar and pestle to grind it up, however you want to do it to make it into a more fine powder. Um, one step that I had forgotten to mention is if you... So when I took mine out of the big container, this container here where it was in all the water, I was able to take all of the plant material out without much being in there. A couple of pieces fell to the bottom and have now dried in this and they can easily be just pulled out. But if you think you're gonna have a lot of plant material left, a lot of leaves and stuff, you can always put it through a strainer or something like this, whereas the plant material will stay up here, you can get rid of that and then the powder will go to the bottom and then strain it a second time through your fine cloth and that way you get anything out of there. But Here's this after drying for a couple of days out in the sunshine. I'm going to grind it up into a powder now. One day I want to get one of those really big grinding stones that you see people using in Peru and Mexico to grind up cochineal and other herbs. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> I know that this takes a long time doing it by hand like this, but I really like to be a part of the whole process and not just stick it all in a blender. Okay, here it is. Nice, fine, beautiful blue powder. And it still just smells just the tiniest bit like a fish market. <laughs> this will be enough to make a nice big vat. And how you use it depends on what recipe you're using. Um, just remember that because we used a lot of the garden lime 
to pull it out of solution, there's going to be uh, it's going to be fairly basic. So you may not need if you use a recipe that calls for something to make it more basic, you may not need as much as it calls for. Just use your pH strips and make sure you're getting the right pH with it. But yeah, there it is. Indigo powder from fresh indigo leaves. Thanks for joining me. That was fun. Hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. <laughs> Bye. I still see when we climbed up in those trees twelve years old.